One of the quests in the game that many seem to save but never use, simply because they're not really sure what to use it for to get the best possible results, is the imbue quest. In a prior video, I already covered being able to imbue items for the very sought after 220, which is two to a specific skill tree or particular character, and then 20% FCR, and it proved to be a pretty decent way to be able to obtain one. However, since then, I've been really curious as to how this would work when it comes to Druid Pelt to try to find myself a 5 NATO, which is 2 to Elemental Skills or Druid Skills in general, and then 3 to Tornado. Prior to making this video, I took a couple of Druid Pelts over to Charzy to be able to imbue, just to see what could potentially roll and if it'd be worth investing more time into. And luckily, 12th try, I was able to get myself a 5 NATO. So in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and give another shot to try to find myself another 5 NATO within 50 different imbues. All while beforehand going over the finer details and the crucial information that you'll need to know to give yourself the best odds of finding a 5 NATO for yourself, if not any other plus 5 to Druid Skill Pelt. For complete transparency, I did have to hero edit this character at level 87 with all the needed bases, as well as an open imbue quest to make this video possible for you today. This is simply just for demonstration purposes to see if this would be worth the investment and the time needed to be able to go through the process of imbuing Druid Pelts for a 5 NATO. And all of the information that I'm going to go over in this video today is going to be linked down in the description below for any of you guys that want to check it out for yourselves, aside from just watching this video. Before we continue further, the common shout out for this video is going to be all of those who recently started funding my channel and have been enjoying the content. Thank you all so much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. More videos coming very soon. Now let's go ahead and get into the video. Let's get started and break down some of the basics on Druid Pelts that you'll need to know when imbuing them. For frame of reference, staff mods will refer to a specific skill within the Druid skill trees, such as Hurricane, Fury, or Summon Grizzly, for example. When you go to imbue any item, it takes your character level plus 4 to make the new item level, with the item level cap being at 99, even if using a character level of 99. Also, remember that the item level doesn't equal to quality level, which is determined by the base type for the item. You can always have a lower quality level item and have a much higher item level, such as antlers with a quality level of 16 that drop in hell difficulty. However, you cannot have an elite version of antlers, such as Earth Spirit with a quality level of 76, drop in normal difficulty. Something to keep in mind when it comes to Diablo 2 Resurrected, they didn't add any features to be able to let any player see item levels for any gear in this game. So hopefully you won't be too confused when it comes to trying to understand this video. Despite not being able to see the item levels, just follow along with everything that I'll be telling you and you'll be in good hands. Anytime that something is imbued, the new mods or stats that roll on the item are completely random. It's all based on RNG or random number generation. One of the important stats to look for is a plus two to Druid skills, which is an affix level of 50. So any base with an item level of 50 or higher can have this roll. Speaking of, if you imbue with a character level of 87 or higher, it creates an item level of 91, which has a guarantee for three different staff mods to roll. And this also doesn't count for the additional rolling of plus two to Druid skills. The chance at item level 91 of rolling a plus 3 to a staff mod is 55% for each one of the potential said staff mods. Meaning, if you imbue a pelt with 3 staff mods, each one has a 55% chance to roll plus 3 to said mod. To understand the odds in a much simpler form, here's the druid's tier list of skills broken down. I'm only going to leave this on the screen for a few seconds, so if you'd like to check out the list in finer detail, go ahead and pause the video or take a screenshot if you desire. And to further break down by which item level you can roll each staff mod on a particular imbue, the item level breakdown is as follows. Just like with the skill tier list, I'm only going to leave this on the screen for a few seconds. So again, if you want to look at it in more detail, make sure to pause the video or take a screenshot. So for example, taking into consideration the Druid skill tier list, as well as looking at what tier can roll at a particular item level, keeping with the video idea of trying to imbue for a 5 NATO, there's a 3 in 20 chance that it will spawn with Tornado. Since at item level 91, there's 3 chances for a staff mod to appear, and 20 skills in the tier 3 to tier 6 range, and a 55% chance that the staff mod would roll with plus 3 and there's also 1 in 22 chance that it will roll with plus 2 to Druid skills. So imbuing a pelt has roughly around 1 in 267 chance of it being a plus 2 to Druid, plus 3 to Tornado specifically. You can bump the chance for a plus 3 to a staff mod to increase from 55% to 59% by getting the item level to 99, meaning using a character level of 95 for imbuing instead of a character level of 87 that I'll be doing in this video. Some additional stats that haven't been mentioned up to this point that are desirable are plus to life, fast to hit recovery, resistances, and 2 open sockets, to name a few examples. To add some weight to the additional stats, just to give a few examples, the most ideal bases for the sought after 5 NATO with good additional stats that can roll are the elite bases, because an earth spirit can get any rare prefix and suffix except for of the mammoth, which is the highest plus life stat. Sky spirit can get any rare prefix and suffix except for of the mammoth from the helm affix pool, but it can still get of the mammoth from the pelt affix pool, and dream spirits can get any rare affix, including of the mammoth from either affix pool. 
For anyone that wants to check out their possible prefixes, suffixes, and just look into the deeper information about their preferred role on their ideal pelt, I've added a lot of links to the video description that hopefully can help you find any additional information that you're looking for, as well as to clarify anything that you may have questions about or were confused on up to this point. To quickly go over what the colors of the pelts represent, if the pelt does change color, as far as the prefixes, 66% to 200% enhanced defense turns the pelt dark gold. Attack rating per level turns the pelt white. Plus two to light radius turns the pelt a light yellow. Mana based on character level turns the pelt blue. Plus two to a specific skill tree, being the summoning skills, elemental skills, and shapeshifting skills, will turn the pelt light gold. And plus two to druid skills turns the pelt green. And for the suffixes, plus 31 to plus 60 to life would turn the pelt red. Chance to cast Frost Novo and Struck turns the pelt light blue. And any percent chance to cast Novo and Struck will turn the pelt crystal blue. There are additional color affixes, but they can only appear on blue magic pelts. Also, these specific numbers matter because anything below them, such as for light radius, if your pelt has plus one to light radius instead, it will not change the pelt color. And do keep in mind, if you do see these colors, then that stat is, for lack of better wording, the most dominant stat of what rolled. Specifically, the chance to cast Nova and Frost Nova procs, the additional plus life stat, and the attack rating. However, any of these can additionally roll on other color pelts as well. However, the color represents those stats as the primary ones for the particular roll. I'm going to be using all Dream Spirit bases for these imbues because not only does it have the chance to be able to roll the best, but it is also my favorite skin for Druid Pelts, with the close second being the Antler skin. Remember that these bases cannot be anything other than their plain white titled versions with no open sockets, and if using any that are ethereal, they will remain as such even after imbuing, so make sure to keep that in mind. With all the information now out of the way, let's go ahead and imbue these pelts to be able to see what could potentially roll.
And that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're able to see if this would be worth the time and the investment needed to try to find yourself a 5 NATO through and viewing. It did show that it's possible and I was able to get one again. However, the odds of being able to actually do this on a consistent basis are gonna be relatively low. However, with the guarantee of three different staff mods when you have a character level of 87, you will have better chances than to try to actually drop one when it comes to farming all over the game and to get a 5 NATO that way. Make sure to stay tuned for the next video in this series where I take the dud rolls from this video and use the Hiraja Q Perfect Skull recipe to be able to potentially re-roll them for another chance at 5 NATO. I'll go over the finer details of everything you need to know about re-rolling for a 5 NATO using the Rare Druid Pelts. Make sure again to stay tuned for that video. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content and want to see more, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified whenever a new video comes out. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. There you are. There you are. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave it a like. It is greatly appreciated and it does help this channel to be able to grow. Also, for any of you guys who want to check out more of my Diablo 2 Resurrected content, there's going to be a playlist in the corner up above that you guys can go check out. Other than that, hope you're all staying safe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.